de mi corazón. What's going on? You know, they brought me to Chicago. And so I said, oh, let's do Chicago. This will be fun. But you know what I'm having real fun with? Apparently, uh, tonight I'm going to go into uh, the I'm gonna go into the United Center tonight. Really? Oh, yeah. We're going to have some fun with it, Manny. You're going into the DNC? Yes, sir. What are you going to do? Uh, I think I'm doing uh, Fox and uh, News Nation. I might do some CNN tonight. You can chat with some people? Well, you know, first of all, I, I, they may not recognize me, so I might just get it. I might no, just get a pass, you know. You. I might just get a pass, you know. I'm a black they, dude at the DNC. <laughs> I might be able to just walk in, walk in and out. It's not a big deal. They will recognize you. So there. So this is what I found particularly interesting is that they are obsessed. They are obsessed with uh, with with conservative media. Yeah. They're They're obsessed. They're our people don't have any clue who Democrat member of Congress is. Maybe AOC. Yeah, I think but so. they're obsessed with like guys like you. Char Charlie Kirk was on the program last night. He's getting recognized like every every two seconds, right? <laughs> like walking through, people are hissing at him. Very For cat, -like, very cat like energy. Get yeah, out. very no, feeble. Oh yeah, can't, very. That feeble. can't be true. Yes, it is true. Oh my gosh, it okay. is true. All right, I gotta ask Charlie. Then. I'm gonna ask him what what to expect. So you're gonna get people. You're gonna get people up in your grill. Is your team ready to film? Is your team ready to film? Yeah, it's, listen. This go film, beast mode. This film ready stuff. This is the stuff that uh, uh, online fundraisers. This is their dream. They love this kind of stuff. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. What are you gonna say if somebody comes up to you and is like, you know, why, why, you know, why you a Republican? Oh man, who? Or why you support Donald Trump? Like what? Like what? What? what, what oh well, that one's easier here? because I just want the country to work. Like, I want the country to function. I want to actually follow the law. I don't want to have the potential of World War III. I want an economy that makes sense. I don't get into the fuzzy, lovey-dovey stuff. I'm about results. I'm results-oriented. That's who I've always been. And so, you know, that's why I support him. I mean, how I became a Republican, I just always felt that Democrat policy didn't make any sense. And then, you know, like I'm a finance guy. I'm an economics guy, really. And so their public policy never made sense to me. Their, their economic policy never really made sense to me. And then when you actually have observed it, like you watch out some of the initial Obama stuff and what that's done, like to the financial industry, it's not been good. You know, like um, I was listening to um, one of those online podcasts because not everybody has one, you know, like you, you're like, you're, you're like a forerunner, man. You are, you're a pioneer, Benny. Everybody's got one now. People are closing and, their podcast down. Actually. They're like, like they can't compete. Too many. There's There's, too, yeah, it's too yeah, many. Yeah. But like, so, you know, you, you have a situation where it, it, uh, they were, this one guy was talking about black wall street and how black wall street in Tulsa was destroyed um, by white supremacists in the Klan back in that time was in, during, uh, during the twenties, during the Jim Crow era, very, very devastating thing to the black community, right? Under Democrat policy today, I'm not sure you could build a black wall street. What do I mean by that? One of Barack Obama's sig signature legislation was uh, Dodd-Frank, uh, the financial reform bill that held the banks accountable. Well, the result is the big banks have gotten massively bigger. Starting a small back, a small bank is almost impossible now. Unless you just have, you know, 30, 45 million dollars or somebody wanting to invest in starting a new bank. The regulatory burdens are massively high. Um, it's hard to break into the market now with all the rules put on by the federal government. So when I say the Democrat policy doesn't work, I mean it because I've seen it. Yeah. So last night we saw Joe Biden say the, the very fine people hoax yeah. again. Yeah. Say Donald Trump calls white supremacists, KKK, Nazis, very fine people. Yeah. Why they keep peddling that? There's no other explanation other than they're trying to stoke racial hatred and yeah. animus. No, that's all. That's all it's it is. Debunked hoax. It's totally no, that's debunked. all it is. They're trying to they're trying to continue with this trope that Donald Trump is is a, is a racist. He's orange Hitler, all this other all this craziness. That's what they're trying to do. Because if people just generally like all the candidates and then they compare policy, like Donald Trump wins 60, 40, like this thing ain't even a race. It's not close. So you have to stoke, you have to use the emotions of this, of the stains of our history as a country in order to make the race even. That's why he continues to do that kind of stuff and lie. 
Because if you go and watch that press conference, actually, you know what's interesting about that press conference, where this comes from? He was talking, I think it was about infrastructure. He was talking about infrastructure and then what happened in Charlottesville had happened. And so for 17 minutes, he's talking to the press. You know, Kamala Harris doesn't talk to the press. Joe Biden, I think, is given what? Four press conferences in four years? Maybe five? Donald Trump was doing them like every third day was a press yeah. conference. Yeah. So he's talking to the press for 17 minutes and they're like, well, will you denounce these neo-Nazi groups, these white supremacy groups? And he said it like 15 times. Of course I denounced them. Yes, I denounced them. That was wrong. That violence can't be tolerated. And then towards the end, it's like around minute 15, he said, but look, I've already denounced it, but then you also had good people in the crowd, no matter their viewpoints, what they wanted to support. So they clipped that the two good people on both sides, ignore the other uh, 16 minutes and 52 seconds. And that's how you get one of these ridiculous uh, dogmas in our politics that Joe Biden still repeats to this day, even though it's been fact checked, it is totally false, but he says it anyway, because he knows he's not gonna be checked by the media. It's really humiliating. You're right though, they, that's, how they, that's how they narrow the bridge by yeah pulling at people's emotions. Yeah. People were emotional last night. They were like crying. Everyone was crying and saying, thank you, Joe. But this party just like shivved them. What, was they it, just like threw them out with the trash. Was it, and so that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, Nancy Pelosi, you work in the same yeah, chamber as her. Yeah. Like, doesn't make any sense to me. They're like, they're like saying, thank you, Joe. While he's not even allowed to stay at the DNC. They've kicked him out. They've sent him to California. He's not even here. He didn't even spend the night. So they kick him out. And then everyone's clapping like seals being like, we love you. No, you don't, man. I mean, like, this is a hostile environment, right? This is really humiliating. Were people tired or were they just like, was it like they're just so, or people were like crying really, or were they just tired? And you get water coming out, you, you, your eyes get watery when you're super tired because <laughs> yeah, you're know. yawning because yeah, it was so sure. late. Look, it's, it's messed up what they did to Joe Biden, but the party, they believe in power. They don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in separation of powers. They don't believe in the rule of law. If they did, the border would be secured. If they did, they wouldn't have done that stupid uh, student loan bailout, which is a violation of federal law. We've never given the executive that power. Never. Congress has never done that. But he just did it. Um, so, like, this is what I'm saying. They care about power. And when they thought, it wasn't just about him losing. When they thought they were going to lose a massive amount of House and Senate seats, yes. that's when they were like, okay, pull the plug. Nancy, you the toughest among us. Go ahead, go in there and get them. <laughs> she is the toughest among them, though. Yeah. Oh, she's, listen, she, that, that lady's tough. She, I mean, yeah. she, we, we, we keep playing the clip of her, like, you can, you can see, we, we can play it here. Like, you, can see, you can see the ice in her veins. Look at it, like, we love Joe. She's supposed to be saying, we love Joe. <laughs> what? Like, she, you don't have to be a uh, like a body language expert to see exactly what's happening. You remember those bad lip reading dudes from uh, <laughs> the beginning of last Congress? Yeah. We need them now for this bad <laughs> lip reading. Get back into effect. We need you at the DNC. We need that kind of stuff, man. I don't know. I don't know if she's looking for ice cream or some water or that she loves Joe. I don't know what she's doing. Over yeah, there. she knows what she did. She said I had to do what I had to do. That's what she said yesterday. Yeah. Had to do what I had to do. You want to tell you a quick story? Please. So it was like, I think it was the second week of them like dying politically. Yeah. They were a mess. After the debate. After the debate. Yeah. It's like the yeah. second week we're back in DC. And on the floor, you I stand in the back so I can kind of see everybody. And in the back of the chamber, like Nancy's walking around doing Nancy things in the back of the chamber. She's sitting next to Raskin. And Raskin's doing one of those lean overs like this. Like you know when somebody's talking to you and nobody here, he's leaning in like this and she's leaning in and she's just talking. And when I watched this, I was like, oh, okay. Here's the real game. This is the real thing that's happening right now. Basically, two weeks later, right after our convention, you know, Joe Biden was gone. Do you think they? Do you think they set him up with that debate? Do you think that was the goal? No, I everyone was like, "Why is such an early debate?" There's a setup. No, I think he set himself up with the debate. I think that was his ego. Like, I think he legit was like, "These polls, it looks like I'm slipping, but I could deal with Donald Trump. I know what I'm gonna do." And then he decided to do it because you can't make a candidate debate. There's no diabolical uh, shadow game where they slip the debate in front of him. And he signed. It doesn't work that way. Cause like, even if he's lucid the next day, he's going to be like, who's, I didn't mean to sign that. We ain't debating him. So like, I think it was him, him and his ego and his team were like, 
all we got to do to reset the race is let is have a good debate and then he blew himself up and that was it so do, do is megan the stallion twerking going to get it for kamala <laughs> nah it's not it's not gonna work it's not gonna work. that's the biggest event the, so the only question is how much does she get paid because you know yeah. the word on the street is everybody's getting paid over there yeah you know if they were talking about six figures, you know, Benny, then, you know, yeah. I, I might have to send you over there to get a, qu a quick hundred K out of them. But we would, totally, <laughs> we would love to have Kamala on. Kamala, we'll do it for free. You are welcome. We're in Chicago, baby. You could come on the stream any single time. Nah, she, I, I think, I don't think it's going to work. I really don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Walls was excited about that, but that's because he thought there was an actual stallion on stage. Uh, so oh, when, gosh. when the, um, so when it, like when it all shakes out, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing s still strong numbers for Trump. Yeah, so polling actually looks good. I, I look at real politics, their, real politics, um, their average. That's what I watch. Yeah, real clear politics. Excuse me, and I look at their average all the time. And so in the battleground states, you know, the president President Trump's up like point two or point three in the battlegrounds. But you got to understand, this is after a month of one of the greatest uh, PR campaigns for a summer blockbuster we've ever seen. Yes. Like this thing is like Kamala, like this movie that they're promoting <laughs> starring Kamala Harris as, as Cleopatra and Margaret Thatcher rolled into one. It's getting rave reviews, Benny. Everybody says it's the greatest thing of the summer. And then people are going to watch the movie and they're going to be like, this thing sucks. Yeah. And that's what, that's what we're witnessing. So in spite of all that, he's still leading in the battleground states. So I, I think we're in good shape. We just got to be focused, be focused, be locked in, talk about her record, talk about our vision. I think we're going it's going to work out. How are you going to separate? You're, you're the politician here, right? You're a successful politician. You win your race by a billion votes. Uh, how are you going to separate? Like, I will solve all of this on day one. How are you going to separate? That's the thing I can't get over. So Joe Biden last night talking about how great everything's going. Yeah. Kamala gets on the campaign of trails, talks about how much everything sucks in America right now and how she's going to fix it on day one. How are you going to convince the people that you haven't been president for the last four years? So everyone's seen Joe Biden. But the, see, that's the thing. She's not. And so like real people are sitting back and everybody like, but wait a minute, sis. I mean, that's how we talk. Like, wait a minute, sis. You, you're there right now. Yeah, but yeah, like if you right. were going to fix prices, why are you waiting until January? You could do that right now. That saves me six months of heartache trying to figure out how to put food <laughs> on the table. Um, if you're going to secure the border, you you could do that right now. They're probably sitting there thinking like what we think. Like Joe Biden's not even there anyway. Like just walk in the Oval and be like, <laughs> hey, Mayorkas, do this. We're changing it right now. Like all this could occur now. It's not because she doesn't want to do it. She's just, she's uh, uh, play acting. She's, what is it, LARPing? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, it's she's, LARPing. She's live action role playing <laughs> as a moderate. She's <laughs> LARPing as a moderate. He's got right the now. language, baby. He's I got, got the it. Yeah, he's smoking. I got it. Smoking, baby. I got it. She's so, LARPing as a moderate. So somebody was, somebody yeah. was LARPing last night as like, um, I don't know, MLK. The AOC was doing her best, like MLK impression. You work with AOC. I've seen photos of you with her. Like, you got, you've talked with her. We, we've never yeah. spoken with AOC. But she had a clip last night that maybe you could interpret for us. I want to play it just really quick. It's not a long clip, like 20 seconds. Can you interpret, like, what she's saying? Because everyone, you know, everyone clapped like a lobotomized seal, but we still don't know what's <laughs> going on with what she's saying. Maybe you could, can you speak AOC right. for us? Okay, go. And I, for one, am tired about, of hearing about how a two-bit union buster thinks of himself as more of a patriot than the woman who fights every single day to lift working people out from under the boots of greed trampling on our way of life. When, when like you, when you see her in the hall and you like ask her, Hey, have you seen Deadpool or Wolverine? Does she talk like that to you? I have no I idea. I have not seen <laughs> Deadpool I got and no Wolverine. Idea. I have not. Is, is that how she is? I would say no. That was an act. All that was an act. That was, <laughs> listen, man, these people are acting. It, they seriously are. This is all acting. This is all Hollywood. <laughs> and it's so, it's so crazy to watch, but no, I've never seen anything like that. I can't even interpret that. You don't know what she's saying? I have no yeah. idea what she's doing. Yeah. The fingers are going up. Like, is she at Studio 54? Like, what's happening? Is it disco era again in America? I'm lost. 
I don't know, Benny. <laughs> so I try not to interpret, interpret foolishness. I just look at it for what it is. And so, you know, me and my friends, we might see something like that and be like, man, that girl crazy. I don't even know. Eh. Next, moving on. <laughs> that girl crazy. That's all I got. That girl crazy. Next, I think she's a communist, so that's a red flag. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, she might. Yeah, I think she is. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, through November, what's the message? What's the winning message? I know you got to rock and roll. What's the, well, how are you going to rock and roll? We got 70 days. Well, look, as I spill water on myself, trying to hurry up and answer the question. Um, look, I, I think the message is clear. It's a contrast election. Who did a better job? Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, Joe Biden. It's without question. It's Donald Trump. You want your border security. You want your border open. You want a roaring economy or you want a stagnant one. You want low inflation or high inflation. You want low mortgage rates or high mortgage rates? Do you want uh, the gender equity, gender equality people running schools in our country? Or do you just want human physiology and human biology, which is time tested and mother approved being the way we raise children in our country? Do you want conflicts popping off every other day? in the Middle East and in, and in Eastern Europe, or do you want peace around the globe? It's, it's a contrast election, it's a choice election. So I think we stay focused on, on our agenda, focused on the job that Donald Trump did when he was president of the United States, and we're gonna go ahead and, and, and win. We'll go, go ahead and beat uh, Cleopatra, send her to MSNBC to be a contributor, and then we'll be all right. You sound very unburdened by what has been. Listen, I know what can you, be. You, you sound like- I uh, know what can you sound be. Like you you sound like you did not fall out of a coconut tree. All I know, man, is I just want to unburden Kamala Harris. <laughs> That's right. I just want to unburden her. <laughs> I would watch the AOC Kamala Harris, you know. Uh, I will not watch show. that. Yeah. You yeah. know what that is? Great for content. No, you know what that is? That's one of those shows they put on E that last a half a season. <laughs> <laughs> they ordered they ordered 20 episodes they can only get through nine and they're like yeah this ain't working cancel <laughs> they could have they could have yeah. been on acolyte season two but they canceled that oh, one wow. too yeah too that's bad. pretty good yeah, all right. <laughs> congressman thank Danny, you all right brother. take it easy all right stay strong out there thank you <laughs>